Today is going to be 82-1. We're going to take a look at polynomials, which is a type of function, and I guess it's not really specific just to polynomials, but you're going to see a lot of polynomials here. But we're going to be factoring by substitution, and so you guys are going to be able to factor a polynomial or other types of equations by this concept of substitution. So sometimes we're given a polynomial or any type of equation that's similar actually to a quadratic equation. Now when they look similar we call this a quadratic type equation and so it's currently in a form in which we can't do anything to it and so we're going to use a form of substitution to turn that expression into a quadratic equation and then once it's in that quadratic equation then the properties and rules in being able to solve the quadratic equation will work. So on this first example here, notice it says x to the fourth plus 5x squared plus 6 that equals 0. Well, that's not a quadratic equation because this right here, that's x to the fourth power. That can't be quadratic. But what if I substitute a variable? What if I say, let's u be x squared? Well, this x to the fourth is the same as x squared squared. And so if I said u is x squared, well, if I substitute u, I get u squared plus 5u plus 6 equals 0. That's a quadratic equation. And so because that's a quadratic equation, properties of a quadratic equation work. So this will factor. This will factor into u plus 3, u plus 2. Well, we're not um, solving for u, right? So even if I do say u plus 3 equals 0 and u plus 2 equals 0, we're not solving for u, we're solving for x, so I'm going to have to plug x squared back in. And so now I'm going to get x squared equals negative 3, and then x squared equals negative 2. Now if I square root, I'm going to get x equals root 3i, that's plus or minus, and plus or minus root 2i. So now the first thing that I did here is I substituted in a u for a value that makes the equation into a quadratic equation. Now generally speaking, it's the value that's next to b. So this idea of x squared, if I substitute u in for x squared, that's going to turn this statement into a quadratic equation. So then what I did was I solved. And I got u by itself. Right? I did the process of solving for that u once I did the substitution. Then you can substitute the u back in. Now I could have substituted the x squared back in for u here or here, and that's what I did. Or I could have said u equals negative 3 and then substituted it in. And then from there, just make sure you continue solving for the original variable that we had. In this case, that was x. Next one. So I need to substitute u in for the value that makes it a quadratic equation. Now it's generally the value that's next to b. So if I say u equals x minus 3, now this will become u squared minus 2u minus 3 equals 0. So now solving. Um, maybe I can factor this, so this will factor into u minus 3, u plus 1, yep. So then that means u will equal 3, and u will equal negative 1. Well, I have to resubstitute it back in, so this is x minus 3 equals 3, and x minus 3 equals negative 1. Add 3 to both sides, add 3 to both sides x will equal 0 and positive 2. Now it doesn't just have to be like an x squared, like this one. This is x to the fourth. And so with an x to the fourth, that means I'd have to say u equals x to the fourth power. Because when I, because this right here, this is x to the fourth squared, which that will make it u squared. So factoring that, you're going to get u minus 9 and u plus 2. 
that was setting each one equal to zero. Right, I have to solve for that variable. So now resubstituting in, I can say this is x to the fourth. I add nine to both sides, I get nine. And I get x to the fourth equals negative two. So now taking the fourth root. Ooh, that's fun. This is gonna give me x equals plus or minus the fourth root of nine. Well, that doesn't simplify. And then plus or minus the fourth root of two i. Because it's an even root, just know that you still have imaginary numbers because of that. Now sometimes our values can be a little tricky in this instance. So in this case, x to the negative one, what if we make that u? Right, I said the shortcut is generally the value that's next to b. So this is gonna give me u squared minus nine u minus 10 equals zero. So now factoring this, you're gonna get u minus 10 and u plus one. Now remember we're still solving, so u equals 10 and u equals negative one. So now resubstituting the value back in, x to the negative one equals 10 and x to the negative one equals negative one. Now this is really weird, right? x to the negative one, what the heck is going on? Well, that's the same as one over x equals 10 and one over x equals negative one. Well, getting x by itself, right? If I want to flip this to the reciprocal, well then this is gonna get flipped, which is 10 over one, it's negative one over one. And so x will equal one over 10 and negative one. Another way of doing that, if I had one over x equals 10, I can multiply both sides by x. So I get one equals 10 x, divide both sides by 10, so x equals 1 tenth. Same idea. Next one. So this one here, I can say u equals x to the 1 third. So now making that type of substitution, that's gonna give me u squared minus two u minus eight equals zero. So this is gonna be u minus four and u plus two. And so I get u equals four and u equals negative two. Now substituting it back in, So how do I get this one-third, right, this x to the one-third? Well, we're going to talk about this a little bit more in the next lesson. But a shortcut when it comes to powers, remember this one-third is the same as a cube root of x. Well, the way that we get rid of a cube root is a cube. And so if I cube both sides. Now another reason why cubing works is because, remember, I have to multiply these powers. This one third and this three, I have to multiply those together. Well, one third times three gives me one. Well, that's x to the first power. That means x is by itself. And so I get x equals 64 and negative eight. And that's gonna be my answer. So what type of concepts were discussed today? Uh, we took a look at u substitution and we were able to break it down into the quadratic type equation. Go ahead and uh, leave anything else that you thought that you may have learned today in the comments. And in your own, why is it called a quadratic type equation? So I want you guys to go ahead and share that. Why would you think it call, is called a quadratic type equation? So this does conclude our lesson. If you guys do have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.